日本をかっこよく結び大学小田正義です本日はですね株式会社 ITR アナリストとして活動されておりますマーク・アインシュタインさんを招きしてお話を伺いますマークさんよろしくお願いします Thank you very much マークさんはですねこのアナリストとしてこちらの本になりますねテックネイティブカンパニーという本の著者でもありましてですね世界中のですね最先端の IT ですとか IoT だったりだとか最新技術の研究市場分析コンサルティング経営のアドバイスもされている活動をされておりますまたですね CNN とか BBC のコメンテーターとしても活動されておりますので今日は日本の現状と課題と、そして私たち今何を学ぶべきかというところをお聞きしたいと思います。はい、マークさん、ズバリ、日本の現状ですよね。最新技術っていうのはどういった現状でしょうか。Right. So I think it's a very interesting question、um, because the book that my company wrote Uh, we actually wrote just before COVID 19 happened.、Um, but really, I think that COVID 19, of course, in the IT world has changed everything in Japan.、Um, when we look at the, the challenges for IT in Japan, there are obviously many.、Um, Japan is not as strong as it used to be in IT. And so basically,、um, I think that there are, are two ways to look at it. Right. So, one, if we look at what needs to happen immediately, is how are Japanese exporters, you know, NEC, Hitachi, Sony,、mm-hmm. Fujitsu,、mm-hmm. how can they compete with GAFA,、mm-hmm. with Google and, and Facebook and Apple and Amazon?、Um, big question. But I think that also looking at Japan domestically, small businesses,、mm-hmm. um, you know, now that Corona has happened,、mm-hmm. You know, finally, work from home, for example, work from home technology started. We were talking about work from home technology in Japan for more than 20 years, but Corona happened, and in three months, all Japan w o r k at home, w o r k online.、Mm. So I would argue that technology and IT, it's not about technology, it's about culture. It's about how organizations are able to evolve and change. And so, you know, DX, digital transformation,、mm-hmm. is a giant theme in Japan. But it's just as important to have the right culture as it is to have the right technology. Now, Mark, I'm going to talk about the fact that 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 ずっと黒字だったところはずっとここ数,数十,十数年かけて赤字が続いてきたのはやはり技術的に本が遅れてたりだったりだとか問題がやっぱりそこに課題というか、えー、企業がそして個人が各中小企業が使えてない活用できてないってことですかね Right, so I think the reason for this is that Japan has always been a hardware company manufacturing you know so all these companies that is their DNA Is the manufacturing hardware. But you know, now we live in a software world.、Mm-hmm. And so, you know, software development needs to be more of a focus. That is why GAFA makes money, because they are software companies. And Japanese companies still have a hardware mentality. And I would add to that that, you know, very recently in my company, The number one topic is low code or zero code software. You know, Japan is not strong in software development. And so maybe we can use AI so anybody can make software. Right now in my company, this is the number one hot topic. And so I definitely think that this zero code or no code、um, service and strategy is going to be very, very famous. Um, very soon. 確かに日本はハードウェアだったりものづくりっていうところは得意で今おっしゃってるのはソフトウェアっていうところは弱かったとお話し出てきたけれども今 GAFA そういった最先端の企業がやっていたソフトウェアってサービスは日本でももともとは作ってたりだとか
、えー、Windows の元の前の OS を作ってたり、うん、iPhone のだってもっと日本のでは作ってたりするように、本来だったら日本ってソフトウェアだったりが強かった、得意だったはず。にもかかわらず、なぜソフトウェアが弱くなって日本が今の現状になっているんでしょうかね。Right. So, I think in, in my opinion,、うん、there are two reasons for this.、うん、so, It is true that you know, back when we had services like Mixi and, and many, many kinds of services, you know, 3G,、mm. iMode,、mm. um, Japan was the king of the world.、Mm. No question. But I think two things happened. One is the competition. So, you know, when all these GAFA services came in America,、mm. they were focused on America.、Mm. But after America, you know, everybody had Facebook. Facebook came to Japan、mm. <laughs> and they started doing a lot in Japanese. And so did all the gaming companies,、mm. all the hardware companies, everybody. So I think there was less competition,、mm. almost no competition from overseas companies. And so that really is what I think helped create this Galapagos effect that we always talk、mm. about, right? So that's the, the first reason. And I think the second reason、mm. has to do with education.、Mm. IT education system in Japan. So, in、um, America or Europe,、um, you know, somebody will major in computer science you know, from undergraduate and then get a master's degree and then a PhD.、Um, you know, old style software was much easier to do, but today's software, AI, machine learning, is very, very complicated and you need years and years of experience. To be able to, to do this.、Um, but the Japanese education system, and I didn't go to university here, I don't, you don't focus so much.、Um, and it's very hard to start understanding machine learning when you enter a company. And so I think that the education system here is not conducive、um, in the way that it is in other countries. And, and I hope that that changes to some extent going forward. Or, I hope that you know, this AI low code, no code、um, can maybe help fix that problem in Japan. I think this is very unique to Japan.、Um, Japan has a very unique business culture.、Um, so, for example, I used to work for a Japanese gaming company. And every year they would hire a number of fresh graduates, but they would give them their assignment three months after joining. So they would say, you know, these people are going to marketing, these people are going to sales, these people are going to accounting, these people are going to be programmers, but they have no programming or IT background. And so I think it's really impossible to compete with a GAFA who is hiring all PhDs from Stanford or Harvard or Oxford. Or these kinds of institutions. 今のこう聞くともう最初の雇用のスタートラインから会社の制度からもう遅れを取ってるっていうことですよね日本は。Correct. So I, I think this is changing a little bit.、うん um, and I also think that as, as I said, if, if AI can bridge this gap,、うん、this could really help Japan move up very fast.、うん、and so that's why this is a very exciting topic right now. ということは日本の制度や文化的にこれを変えるなんてやはり難しいとでもそれを変えずして AI を使っての教育だったりだとか根本的なところって今の現状でも変えれるということですかね I definitely think that AI can help、um, and again I think there's two reasons for that one、um, many Japanese companies don't like to outsource and this often leads to lower quality Um, and so, if you have AI, you can keep it inside and maybe have a better product. So, that's the first one.、Um, and I think the second one is that if within a Japanese company, if you have product teams can change an app or a service themselves, it's just more efficient. It will be faster and it'll be better. IT を AI を使えばそうやって根本的なところを変えれるしアウトソーシングをしにくいところも AI によってそれをサポートして変えれるっていうのは日本だけじゃなくて海外もできるはずそれなのになぜマークさんはそれを日本で
したらいいんだと進めてらっしゃるんですか Well, so I think that you know, AI can help any company anywhere in the world. I mean, Japan is not the only country where population is getting older、um, and smaller, but I think that it's especially important in Japan、um, because of what we already talked about. So I think the you know, reluctancy to outsource、um, is. More popular, more common in Japan than it is in other countries. And、um, I think that,、uh, you know, overall, AI is especially dear to Japan because AI can maybe solve many societal problems. I would say more than in any other country in the world. Ima no. 話ですよね。AI を使えばアウトソーシングが苦手なところの日本がそれでさらにもっと進めると。確かに分かりました。でも、制度や仕組みが進んだとしても、もともとのソフトウェアやコンテンツの面白さ。マークさんはそのゲ,ームゲーミングの会社にいらっしゃったってことですけど、コンテンツのそのユニークさ、面白さがなかったら、いくら広げてもサービスとしても広がらないだろうし、海外にも行かないとは思うんですね。日本のそのコンテンツ、ソフトウェアのその面白さ、本来の面白さっていうのは日本にはあるんでしょうかそしてそれはもっと広がるべき世界にも共通するような通用するようなものになっていくんでしょうかね ?I do.This is what gives me hope.And this is actually why I came to Japan.Because,、um, you know, many of the concepts and ideas that I work with are so advanced and so unique.And、um, that's what makes me very excited to, to go to work every day.And I'll give you some examples.So、uh, one, You know, 5G is very new in Japan and not many people have it yet. But I work with companies in Japan who are already planning for 6G. Already. <laughs> so,、um, and you know, Metaverse. I was talking with customers about Metaverse five years ago. Five years ago. And, and so they have wonderful dreams and wonderful ambitions.、Um, and so I think Japan is, is absolutely. A leader in this space. And, and I always joke that Japan is very good at thinking about the future, but very bad at thinking about today.、Um, but as an analyst, that makes it, it a really wonderful place to work in Japan. Now, it's a unique service. そう、将来のこと、未来のことを考えて、アイディアもそうだし、技術というよりサービス、コンテンツ、面白さっていうのは、確かに日本人は向いてるっていうのは、お話し聞いてもすごく嬉しいし、そうだと思うんですよね。プラス、本来のそういったその素地を広げる AI テクノロジーっていう、AI の作るっていうのは、海外だったりだとかっていうよりか、日本っていうのはタブーもないし、やっぱりとことんそれを突き詰めて作れるっていうのが日本の強みだと思うんですけどもその辺日本の AI のねその作れるもっと伸びるんだろうそれを作ることによって未来も考えれるし今も成長できるとは聞いてて思ったんですけどその辺っていかがですかね I would agree.、Uh, I think there are many reasons for this.、Uh, I think I, I agree with you that Japan's culture Has always taken privacy very seriously. And so I think that's a good foundation to develop AI services.、Um, and, and I also think that you know, Japan, I think, needs AI more than any other country because you know, what are the big industries in Japan? You know, automotive and manufacturing, and self driving cars and industry 4.0 are going to need AI,、um, but also taking care of senior citizens. Um, SDGs are, are very, very popular in Japan more than other places.、Um, agriculture, smart ag- I mean, there, there are, the list goes on and on and on. So I would absolutely agree with you. And, and maybe I'll just tell you one quick story since you're in Omihachiman、mm-hmm. and you're in Shiga. So,、um, you know, AI is used with Wagyu beef in, in Shiga. So we have, you know, in Japan about 5 million cows. That have an AI sensor on their neck.、Mm-hmm. And how the cow moves can tell if they're going to be pregnant or not. So the farmer knows exactly when a cow can be pregnant.
using AI. But only in Japan, the J Japanese beef is so expensive, you can do it in Japan. But in America or Australia or Argentina, it doesn't make sense. So Japan has a lot of specific projects and, and a lot of potential for AI, even in Shiga, mm -hmm. that, that you'll find AI starting to pervade society. So I think it's very, very interesting to see. いや、今のね、その大見牛の話もそうですし、日本のその技術っていうところ、それはもともと精神っていうところ、日本の、まあ、SDGs もそうだし、農業もそうだし、もともとそうやって日本人が気持ちとして、もっとこうやったらもっとこうケアができたりとか、みんなが良くなるよっていうところと、映画が組み合わさって、可能性としてはものすごくあるんだと。確かにマークさんおっしゃる通り、日本には課題はあると。うん、制度のこともある。でも、AI っていうのを組み入れたならば、ものすごい日本の可能性が開かれるっていうお話はすごく面白かったですし、えー、本当にこう学び深かったなと。本当に最先端で研究されて分析されてっていうところからの日本の紐解きは私たちにすごく大きな希望を感じるようなお話でした。で、本当に今回も話良かったんですけど、ぜひ次回はマークさんについてね、お話を伺いたいと思います。はい。ということで今回も本当にありがとうございました。日本をかっこよく結び大学小田正義でした。